Okay, let's go ahead and figure out this math problem without the aid of a calculator. So we have all these numbers and all these various operations. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is 10 plus parentheses 4 squared divided by negative 2 and parentheses all over the absolute value of negative 7 times 3. So after doing all this work, we're going to get one value. What is that value? Well, if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. But uh, if you don't take this step by step, you will in fact make an error and uh, unfortunately, you uh, very well could get this wrong. By the way, we do not want to use our calculators. Put those calculators away. We want to use that uh, lovely calculator in between our ears, that supercomputer that is not artificial intelligence. I know AI is everywhere. Everyone's talking about AI, but you know, you have actual intelligence. So you're definitely smart enough to figure this problem out. Again, I'll show you the answer here in just one second, and then we will go through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And uh, it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer. You see the problem. If you're not ready to see the answer, if you just want to work on it, that's perfectly fine. Just pause the video. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. And the answer is 2 over 21. Okay, so we have a lovely fraction here. And uh, if you didn't get this right, no worries. I'll show you this uh, full solution. But if you did get this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A++, a 110% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in basic math and the order of operations. Uh, you are a professional mathematician at this level. They'll be very impressed with that information indeed. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the work here. And if you did get this wrong or if you did get this right, here's the thing, okay? Anytime you're doing mathematics, it's like telling a story, okay? so. The start of the story, the beginning is the problem. Now, the ending of the story is the solution, right, or the answer. So here is the question, there is the answer or the solution. So you want to tell the story, okay, one sentence, you know, one paragraph at a time, okay? Now, this is not only for your benefit, it's for your math teacher's benefit or anybody else who wants to kind of follow, uh, you know, what you're doing. Because if you make an error, you know, uh, like right there, you're like, oh boy, I made a little mistake. If I would have uh, just, you know, not made that mistake, you know, I would have told the right story. So, you know, remember math is a language and you need to treat it as such. Okay, so one step at a time. Uh, sometimes you could do two steps at a time. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just one second. But before we get started with this problem, we need to understand a super important uh, concept in mathematics, okay? And that is called the order of operations. So we have all different sorts of mathematical operations going on here. So like addition, division, powers, uh, this thing is called absolute value, multiplication again, this whole fraction bar, this is division, like what do we do? Do we do addition first, subtraction, multiplication, division? Uh, you know, uh, powers, you know, like what's the order to do this problem? Because if we do this in various different orders, we're going to get various different answers. Well, luckily for us, we have this cool phrase right here that tells us the exact order to do math problems. Okay, so this is uh, P-E-M-D-A-S. That's kind of hard to uh, remember. Uh, you can use the phrase or um, PEMDAS, right, which uh, uh, is what we're looking at right here or this nice little memory aid, it's called a mnemonic, um, and it goes like this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I don't know what uh, Aunt Sally did, but I can tell you right now, uh, it's likely that even your great-grandparents were even saying that phrase uh, to remember 
uh, PEMDAS. This has been around forever. Okay, now what does it stand for? Let's understand it. Uh, let's go through it real quick so we can have an understanding to what to do in this problem. So the P stands for parentheses. So wherever we see parentheses or grouping symbols like brackets or these little squiggly things, we're going to uh, put our attention there first. Okay, so we're going to work. Um, we're going to handle anything inside parentheses, uh, innermost parentheses first. So in other words, if I had a problem with parentheses here, and then there was brackets here, and then there was other uh, parentheses there, and that's not uncommon in math, you would start from the innermost and kind of work your way out. All right. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now the E stands for exponents, uh, which is effectively uh, powers, right? So 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2. This little E is the exponent, So, but the E... Uh, you, you could just think of that as doing powers next. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be uh, looking at is multiplication and division. This is a very widely confused area in the order of operations. Most students think that, oh, you're going to do multiplication first and then division no matter what. That's not the case. If you have multiplication um, from left to right, okay, you'll do that and then division. But if you have division, then multiplication you do, the, uh, you do the division first and then the multiplication. It's always from left to right. So it's multiplication or division if you have it, whatever comes first from left to right. And then lastly, we have addition and subtraction, and it works the same way, whatever uh, you see first from left to right. Okay, so this is what we need to keep in mind as we walk through this problem, PEMDAS, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here and... Uh, the first thing is, I'm looking at this, it's a big fraction, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, I have a numerator up here, and I have a denominator. Now, anytime you're dealing with a problem like this, uh, and it's what we call like an order of operations problem, where, you know, you got a bunch of numbers, you got to do a bunch of number crunching, what you can do is think of the numerator, okay, all this up here, as one separate problem, okay? Okay and the denominator as a separate problem. So you could effectively work each of these as two problems, and then we'll simplify this at the end, okay? So that's not a bad kind of way to think of uh, fraction problems. So with that being um, you know, understood, the first thing we need to do is kind of look, hey, do we have any parentheses? Yes, we do right here. So we're going to work inside of these parentheses. But remember, this is like a separate problem from the denominator, okay? So you could take two steps, and I'll address this absolute value of negative 7 at the same time, okay? One's not going to interfere with the other, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So here is what we're going to get, okay? So working inside the parentheses, we're going to have 4 squared first, right? So I have powers, PEMDAS, right? So let me go and write this right here. So you can kind of write this on your... Uh, uh, paper. Okay, I'm inside the parentheses. Are there any exponents or powers? Yes, there are right there. Definitely have to do that before I do any multiplication and division. So that would be a 16, and i got to uh, figure out what 16 divided by negative 2 is. But we're just going to take it one step at a time. And right here, we have an absolute value of negative 7. This is kind of a big topic in math for sure. But what you can just kind of... Um, uh, you know, understand is that the absolute value of a number, a positive or negative number, is just going to be the positive version of that number. So the absolute value of negative 7 is a positive 7. The absolute value of 7 is also a positive 7. Now, the reason why that is, is because we're measuring the distance from 0. It's a whole other discussion. If you need help with absolute value, I have a ton of videos uh, on my YouTube channel about absolute value. Plus, you can uh, check out any one of my algebra courses in the description below as well. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and now simplify this. So 4 squared is 16 divided by negative 2, and then absolute value of negative 7 is 7. So here is our first step. Okay, so uh, everything is looking pretty good. Again, we're going to just think of the numerator up here is one separate math problem, and the denominator as another uh, math problem. Okay, but we're not done with the parentheses. So the way that PEMDAS works, okay, let's kind of write it up there again. You have to keep working inside the parentheses until you're finally all complete, okay? So we, we uh, have this one more operation to do. So we have 16 divided by negative 2. Now, what's 16 divided by a positive 2? Well, 16 divided by positive 2 is 8, 
but here we have a positive number and a negative number, right? So anytime you're uh, dividing positive and negative numbers, if the signs are different, like they are right here, the answer is going to be negative, okay? Again, uh, you know, things that you need to know, uh, and if you have trouble with any of this stuff, again, just reference my uh, algebra courses or my YouTube channel, I have a ton of content on this, but you need to master these rules, okay? can't be guessing. Be like, oh, I think it's this. If you're not sure about something when you're doing a problem, always double check it uh, and then put in the correct answer. All right, so 16 divided by negative 2 will be a negative 8. And then, of course, 7 uh, times 3 is 21. So let's go ahead and clean this up. But uh, before we uh, take that next step, let me ask you to take this next step by subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. If you have not yet subscribed and you're getting some sort of value out of my content, it is a tremendously helpful to me when you do subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification button. Uh, it really, really, uh, really does help me out. Thank you so much. Now let's continue on with the problem. All right, so again, we're not done with the parentheses here, so we're gonna clean this up and then we'll go ahead and take another step uh, right here. And it's okay to take two steps, but no more than two steps per in a problem like this, okay? You never wanna take multiple steps and just kind of like, uh, you know, go from here and then like go from there in a problem and then skip not showing all these steps. You don't wanna do that. So, but in this particular case, and if I was grading your work, I could say, oh, you're doing this and you're doing this. So remember, just tell a clear story. All right, so 16 divided by negative two, of course, will be negative eight and seven times three is 21. So here is the problem. Pretty straightforward now. So 10 plus negative eight is going to be what? Well, 10 plus negative eight is going to be, or you could think of this as 10 minus eight, a positive two over 21. And this fraction is uh, as simple as we can write it. And that is that, that is the solution. And uh, again, you know, if you made an error, uh, you could figure out the error if you are kind of telling the story, right? Like one step at a time, you know, if you gave me your work and you were nice and neat and organized, I'd be like, oh, right here is where you made a mistake. And, uh, you know, the value of doing that is I could explain Oh, this little error right there, you know, this misunderstanding, I could correct that. You'd be like, oh, I get that. And now you could continue on and get every single problem correct. So believe me when I tell you, you need to be neat and organized and show each step in mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.